I cannot believe that they are buffing solo queue finally in Dead by Daylight. Sort of. Uh, look, via a tweet coming from the official Dead by Daylight account, Dwelf on a Shelf has delivered us classified information, giving us a sneak peek into what's happening potentially in the next mid-chapter PTB that'll be coming in January. And it looks like we're gonna be given information about our other survivors' whereabouts via icons. It looks like um, if somebody's on a totem, it's going to show a hex totem in the bottom left next to their next to their character portrait. Um, if someone's on a gen, it'll show that they are on a gen. Um, it looks like if you're in a chase, there is no iconography to denote that. Um, it's to be assumed that if you're injured, that that would show that you're in chase, but that's not necessarily true. So this will be tough to know who's messing around and who's actually in a chase. So there's going to be some interesting things there. But I guess the crux of my question that I'm delivering to you guys is is this going to help? If you want my opinion, I would hope that's why you're here. I don't think this is helping. I don't think this is going to help a lot anyway. Now, hear me out on this. I think there's two types of skill in Dead by Daylight. I think there's mechanical skill. This is knowing how to loop different killers, how to be effective at your loops and use your loops wisely as to not exhaust resources for other survivors. It's knowing how to hit your skill checks and break three gens before they even begin. This kind of stuff. But then I think there's informational skill. Informational skill is knowing where your teammates are, knowing where your objectives are, and maybe refocusing as a match goes on. Okay, well, I've got somebody on hook, one person slug, when do I need to unhook, right? It's it's knowing that a bar of a gen that you're working on, that bar is halfway, that's 45 seconds left on that gen. That person on first stage has just got put there, they have 60 seconds until stage two. It's knowing how to do this informational mental math about the chess game that is Dead by Daylight. It's not just executing on things in the moment but it's also being able to plan ahead and uh, really make the next moves happen and and I think there's something to be talked about here mechanical skill is something that you kind of have to practice there's really no two ways around that you have to practice looping you have to go against certain killers but information half of the informational skill can be given to you via a survive with friends Right in a survive with friends, you could say, "Oh, I'm at Shack Pallet, or I'm at Shack, or I've already thrown Shack Pallet, or I'm I'm grabbing a boon right now." Um, and, and so you could be fed where your teammates are, and you can even discuss. Well, maybe you get on a gen, and I'll get on a gen over here, or maybe we cluster up on a gen or something like that. In a survive with friends, you have the ability to go back and forth and actually change your game plan together based on what the entire team is doing, and not just need to be the shot caller the whole time. Now. What does this mean for solo queue? Well, we're getting icons, which is neat and kind of cool, but those icons are only telling you what your survivor teammates are doing. It's giving you some information, but not telling you what to do with that information. And there's no uh, way or ability to have a conversation with your team about what needs to happen via that information, right? Just because people know that uh, one person's on a gen doesn't mean that they are going to know that they also should be on a gen. Just because one person's on hook and one person's on bones doesn't mean that one person's going to come off those bones to go get the unhook. Having information doesn't mean they know what to do with that information. So I think that there are going to be a lot of survivors that are still going to have these icons that are going to fumble the bag. They're going to let you go to stage two because they think they can get that last few percent of the gen done. Or they're going to body block when the killer down somebody two meters from the hook because they think that they can get the killer to drop. There's going to be all kinds of things that happen when survivors don't have the mechanical skill or informational implementation of the information given to them. And I think that's going to be really difficult to overcome. Can we bridge that gap? I'm not entirely sure. You know, when you're in a survive with friends, you can collaborate. So you might think, well, let's just add proximity chat to Dead by Daylight. But if you've ever seen a toxic post game telling you to uh, do awful things or wishing awful things to you, I don't think we should have proximity chats. I don't think we've earned that right. So what do we do then? Do we do bond or kindred baked into base kit? Well, again, I think that boils down to just because you can see other survivors doesn't mean that you or them will be able to make the right choices at the right time in the same way that more skilled players can. So what are we trying to do here? I'm not entirely sure. We obviously want to bring solo queue to the level of survive with friends so that we could figure out where the true game balance problems kind of lie. Eruption, Call of Brine, Overcharge, or uh, Condemned Only Sadako is not a big deal if you play in a decent swift, but those are problems when you play in solo queue. 
So how do we bridge those gaps? How do we make things happen? I'm not entirely sure. Um, you know, having information and being able to implement it is very, very different things. I think this will help to some degree uh, across the middle level of MMR where players are just starting to catch on and really trying to learn how the flow of a match should go. But I think there's a whole swath of players that are going to use this information as ammunition in the post game chat to be mad at everybody else. And that I don't know is really helpful or beneficial. But what do you guys think about this? Do you think this is going to totally fix solo queue? What do you think the next steps might need to be? And of course, this is just a snippet of what we should be getting in this mid chapter, hopefully fingers crossed. But remember that we are on hiatus on Twitch until December 30th. We're coming back with boot camps, but we will have YouTube uploads all through the Christmas season. I love you guys very much and I'll be praying to the entity Mwah! to see you guys in the next video.